All right, the PC itself was built around the once glorious Cooler Master Cosmos S, which I absolutely loved at the time because of the design. I was looking for a case for ages, and when I saw this on uh, on Umart, I went, "No, nah, that's definitely the one." I love the whole design of it. I love the grill on the side. You know, I love the writing, the look around the front, and all that sort of thing. Um, turns out that it may not have been the best decision. The thing is absolutely impossible to move. It's like a two-person carry unless you really want to <laughs> put some work into getting this thing around. Uh, and on top of that, I mean, the case wasn't without its issues back in the day. Thermal problems, apparently it didn't cool that well. I never really had a problem with that. Um, but yeah, a couple of other niggly things. Um, namely the front panel with that capacitive um, touch button for power, which we'll get to a little bit later. But the setup itself, um, we'll pop it open and have a quick look. So if you're not familiar with the case, big fan on the inside. So as you can see, it's pretty much stripped out um, through all the trial and error I've been going through to try and get the thing running. I've been pulling components out, out left, right and centre and, you know, disconnecting all the solder and all that. Um, but basically, um, the machine itself was built on the Gigabyte P55A UD3P, which I've got the box for here. I don't know if you can see that. Always keep your motherboard box. It's proved invaluable so far. It's been hiding away for like 10 years, that thing, but I'm so glad that I still got it. Um, I had that with a Core i7. I think at the time it was running somewhere around 3.6 gigahertz. Um, 700 watt Silent Pro power supply, which apparently have been outdated as with just about everything else within this case, including the case itself. Uh, I've got two, two terabyte HDDs, one one terabyte HDD, which I was using to run the OS and you know games and all that sort of stuff. And the piece de la resistance at the time was dual HD 5770s running in SLI. Um, I really liked those, they worked well. Ifinity was awesome at the time. Uh, I had three 24 inch monitors, all 1080p monitors um, running in iFinity. That was awesome. I loved my flying games, loved my driving games, so it was really cool. I mean, back in the day, it was pretty cool anyway. Um, so, yeah, I mean, basic issues trying to fire this thing up. We got a couple of pops and whizzes and a bit of smoke and all sorts of stuff. So, after playing around a little bit, it turns out that. Uh, both of these graphics cards are probably a bit past it. We did manage to get a boot at one stage. But uh, yeah, since then it's just, I'm not being real careful with this stuff, it's all going. But um, yeah, the Vaporex HD5770, great card. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that they both look like the Cactus. I might try and spend some time on these and um, see if I can resurrect them, but, you know, pretty old school when you look at it, dual DVI's, uh, HDMI and a display port. Um, I suppose also I could mention, it only had four gig of RAM, which apparently back in the day was enough. I, I imagined that I would have had eight, but pulling the sticks out, I only had four. So that's the two GPUs. You can check these RAM sticks out. That one's actually not too bad. This one, oh, as you can see, living near the beach, it's not great for computers. Plus being in storage, bit of rust on there. It's, they're, not, they're not in great nick. Um, I'm probably having some RAM issues with this as well. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's probably to the point where everything needs to be replaced anyway. So um, a quirk of the case, if you haven't worked with the Cosmos before, is that it comes with its own 24 pin, 
which has a case power supply uh, three liter that runs up to the front panel. This is a total pain and it's ugly. Like, I mean, you know, a modern case wouldn't require something like that because you know case management on these things is pretty abysmal anyway as you can see all of the SATA cables coming out of the back of the hard drives you know they all run out into the common area there's the hard drives are facing that way which is considered the wrong way now everything's facing this way so the cables go straight out the back um, but that that was a funny quirk of this case and the whole front panel setup of this thing has proved to be a complete nightmare in trying to get it running again. Um, got a couple of pops and whizzes out of it uh, when just hooking power up to it. Uh, I've tested the power supply in, incidentally with a, um, with a multimeter. I might do a video run through on how to do that because it was really good. I, I thought for quite a while when I was troubleshooting this thing that it must have been the power supply. Things aren't getting power properly, stuck in a boot loop, all these sorts of things. But I've tested every pin and it's all well and truly within the uh, recommended range of, of where the power should be as far as voltages and etc. is concerned. Um, this, well, this is essentially what the front panel looks like and in, there's the capacitive touch. Inside it, there's two banks of dual USB 2, uh, mic, headphone, e-cider, and you know, some other funky connector. Um, it looks really good. It's all lit up, lit up with LEDs, which I really like, but it's just, this is what it's like on the inside. <laughs> so, as you can see, there's this big spaghetti cluster of cabling coming out the back for all the different bits and pieces off the front panel. It's, it's definitely not a neat or elegant solution to um, getting this thing running. This is the PCB for the capacitive touch. Don't know if that's working or not. I, as you can see on the back, it's not too much of a big deal if I have to pull that off and either repair it um, or put a new sensor on there or whatever. It doesn't look burnt out though. None of the components on the board do look burnt out, um, which, is, which is nice because, I'd, like I said, I did get some smoke out of this thing. <laughs> um, one of these little jumpers at the front, however, which brings in the 12 volt power, you're probably not gonna be able to see this because I'm filming it on an iPhone, but that green cable there is crusty. It burnt out, it fizzled up. If you've ever fried a cable before when doing electronics, like even on, you know, something like this, like an Arduino, um, you'll notice that the jackets go all crinkly and, you know, it's all burnt out, like inside the connector. So I'm going to have to, if I want to try and use this case, which I'd love to, which is kind of why I want to call this project, Project Phoenix. I'm going to see if I can bring this thing quite literally out of the smoke and the ashes. In order to do that, I'm going to have to make another one of these, which is only a little connector that goes from the front panel here, um, around underneath and back into this main board that sits inside the front panel. I'll put this back together just quickly so you can have a quick look. And I apologize in advance, I'm probably not gonna edit this video or maybe even any of the ones coming because I have very limited computing power. I'm literally running off three laptops at the moment. None of them are great. I've got one Linux box, one Vio Pro, which, I mean, for what it is, it's not a bad little machine, but, you know, not great for video editing. And the other one's just, it's just a dinosaur, and I pretty much use it for running um, Arduino projects, and I've got a little ADS-B uh, radar setup happening on it. But that's essentially how this front panel looks. So that just slides open and you've got your connectors on the inside there. Um, for anybody out there who's looking at this video and they've found it because it's got a Cosmos S in it and you've had problems with your front panel, um, I'd like to hear from you. Even if you want to get some advice on, uh, you know, maybe desoldering any of these, what I've thought about doing is if I can get this this whole front panel working again properly, 
I would like to replace one bank of these dual USBs with USB 3 um, because being that the case is so old, it's only um, two dual USB 2s. So it'd be nice to be able to bring it up to date with that. I mean, the cabling, I'll see if I can pull this out for you. The cabling on the back isn't too serious. As you can see, it's just these little placeholder solders here, these dual banks of USB, and just standard, your standard little dual plug out the back there. So I would have to upgrade these cables to talk to the new motherboard. Um, but, you know, I don't think that'd be too much of a big deal. I'll have a look at it, um, see what we can do. I'd love to get this case back up and running and maybe do a few more mods. Another thing I'd really like to do is something with this. Um, it's, it, by modern standards, it's pretty ugly, and I'd really like to go with a RGB theme um, when I start replacing these components. Like I said, I'm gonna use as much as what I can that's already in there, um, but I'd like to do RGB, which means I wanna be able to look inside this thing and um, you know, see some nice pretty lights and all that sort of stuff. And in order to tidy up this cabling coming out of the back of these drives, and I've got an optical up the front there as well, I'd like to do something with the back. Um, not sure yet. I, I have kind of toyed with the idea of drilling out the rivets that hold this whole piece together and rotating the whole drive bay so it more closely reflects, you know, like a modern, a modern drive bay. Whether or not that's going to work, not too sure yet because there's a bit of structure happening with this, this part of the tower. Um, as far as fans go, I mean, there's plenty of room up the top. As you can see, there's room for three fans up the top. There's one in the back already. There's a fan port underneath the power supply. There's room for another fan here. There's a big fan in the front. There's probably room for another three at least going up in the front of all these grill sections up the front, which I'll show you now. I'll give you a quick tour of the case. Turn the light on the floor. So from the front, you know, standard optical. These things here, pull one out so you can see. Again, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. It's a bit of rust. It's just surface rust, it's nothing too serious. I mean, I'd probably be able to rub that back and spray it pretty easy. Um, that's your fan at the front, which is a red LED fan, by the way theme for this case and I think probably with most Cosmos S's is red back in the day I mean the whole front panel's red um, and there's a quick view of the other side so you know reasonable cable management kind of going on there but you know it'd be nice to have some grommets in here like the new Cosmos cases do the 25th, uh, 25th anniversary edition's got some really nice um, rubber grommets in there that hide all the cabling and stuff. Big problem with this case that I found, personally, was when I did run all of my cables through these cable management holes here, there's like no room, it's less than an inch between the back of the um, motherboard tray, which isn't removable, and the side of the case that sandwiches in. I'll give you a quick look at how that attaches. So, kind of, locates on the bottom like that and then I don't know if you'll be able to see but as that sandwich is closed there's not a lot of room in there so these are all challenges that I'm going to come across when working on this thing but hey if it's a phoenix it's not going to rise from the ashes on its own